What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and loads of you guys have asked about what is going on with Jude Bellingham, what's the latest transfer news and I will react and share with you guys what's la the latest on Jude Bellingham and also many other transfer news updates and also Jurgen Klopp has met with Liverpool's owner John W. Henry after and before the West Ham United game the owner of uh, Liverpool and FSG was in attendance for the West Ham Liverpool game and Jurgen Klopp was asked specifically about it and I will share all the details between what, what between what happened there but first let's talk about the big news coming out of Spain the RS newspaper who is uh, one of which is one of the biggest newspapers in Spain is reporting that Borussia Dortmund star Jude, Jude Bellingham has opted to join Real Madrid. He believes, according to the newspaper, Bellingham believes a switch to Spain is the best next step in his career, and he is preparing to inform Real Madrid of his decision. Uh, but Real Madrid apparently are unwilling to pay more than 120 million euros for Bellingham. But if Bellingham clearly indicates to Dortmund. I want to go to Real Madrid and nobody else and I think it was between Real Madrid and Liverpool but because Liverpool don't have the money to pay 120, 130 million euros uh, for Bellingham I mean we have the money to do that transfer but then we won't be able to do maybe the other midfield rebuild transfers that is needed so Liverpool cho chose to spend that money on two or three midfielders so according to Real Madrid uh, Chiefs uh, they want Bellingham to confirm to Dortmund that his choice is Real Madrid and that will make it easier for Real Madrid to convince Dortmund to accept this deal of 100, 120 million euros because Real Madrid can use this as a bargaining chip that can help them avoid being pulled into a bidding war with the likes of Manchester City to sign Bellingham and even though Bellingham is Real Madrid's priority this summer and I mean what a midfield rebuild they are doing. They signed Kamavinga two years ago, they signed Chouameni last season and if they signed Bellingham this summer that would complete Real Madrid's new look midfield and I think Bellingham chose to go to Real Madrid because probably Real Madrid said to him you can become the next Galactico in the Real Madrid era and Toni Kroos and Luka Modric they don't have many years left in them even though they are still going strong Luka Modric is still world class they is still one of the best midfielders but he can't go on forever Luka Modric is like 37 years old Toni Kroos a few years longer younger but he's still quite old and Bellingham would get a regular starting place at Real Madrid because those midfielders are getting phased out maybe next season and even though Dortmund wants to keep Bellingham Real Madrid wants him right now and Bellingham has already made his mind up he wants to leave Dortmund and I'm so disappointed in Dortmund that last some last uh, night they couldn't beat Bochum even though they conceded after like four minutes instantly they replied with a goal in just two minutes they scored but then they couldn't hammer home their advantage they created so many chances the Bochum keeper made so many great saves Bellingham had a couple of big chances that he missed or the keeper saved and the Dortmund hands back the title initiative to Bayern Munich and uh, it's boring that Bayern wins the Bundesliga every year I don't have a particular affinity with either club I like Dortmund more than Bayern Munich I will admit because of the Jurgen Klopp connection and the Jude Bellingham connection and uh, yes I would have loved Bellingham to come to Liverpool but I think it's better if Liverpool have restricted transfer budget, budget uh, of 150 to 200 million it's better better to spend that on two free midfielders plus a centre-back than to blow it all on Jude Bellingham plus maybe another centre-back and the last newspaper is reporting that Real Madrid have been working on the signing of Bellingham for months they spent, sent Real Madrid representatives to Dortmund to convince Bellingham to join Real Madrid and I mean Real Madrid is the biggest club in the world no question uh, ahead of Man United, ahead of Barcelona, ahead of Liverpool, ahead of uh, Bayern Munich. Real Madrid are the biggest club in the world because of the Champions League and La Liga titles that they have won in their history. And so I don't think Bellingham needs a lot of convincing to go to Real Madrid. And Bellingham is having his greatest season at Dortmund, scoring 11 goals and getting 7 assists, which is a career high for him and is he worth 120 million euros 
I think he is, but because, uh, as I said, Liverpool have restricted transfer budget, I think um, I think it's much better for Liverpool to for for Bellingham to go to Real Madrid and not to Man City or Man United because that would just make Liverpool's rivals stronger. So, what do you think about Bellingham choosing Real Madrid? I think it's good news from a Liverpool point of view because after Liverpool announced that we are not going for Bellingham. I think it was evident that um, Bellingham would go to another club. I don't think there was any chance of Bellingham staying at Borussia Dortmund. And I was really, really afraid that he would go to Man City or Man United. That would make them really, really strong if either of them got Bellingham this summer. So it's better for Liverpool if he goes to Real Madrid, plays there five, four years, and then hopefully he can, he can come to Liverpool at the peak of his career. I'm sure he will want to come to England and hopefully in four or five years Liverpool will be in a better position financially to sign Bellingham because I, I think even in four or five years Bellingham would cost an absolute fortune. And Jurgen Klopp said this about the midfield rebuild. We have a lot of potential in this team. We didn't show it very often this year but we have a lot of potential. We will keep that and use that and improve that and also we will bring in new players. Both are possible that the, to develop the current players that Liverpool have and to bring in new blood. The one thing I don't understand is after Fabio Carvalho actually made a really good start to his Anfield career, he scored a 97th minute winner against Newcastle. And that was Newcastle's only league defeat until Liverpool beat them in the away in the return fixture at St. James's Park. So for half a season, Fabio Carvalho handed Liverpool Newcastle's only defeat in the league. And yet he hasn't played a lot of minutes, even though he scored after the World Cup restart against Man City. So I'm not sure if, um, if Jurgen Klopp rates him or maybe he just doesn't rate Fabio Carvalho anymore. Because I mean, Liverpool's midfield won't be any worse than this in, the, in any, any time soon. So if Fabio Carvalho can't start in this midfield department, maybe Jurgen Klopp sees him as a forward and uh, maybe he thought he's not yet physical enough or fast enough to play as a left forward or right forward and he's also definitely not physical enough to play in the midfield potentially under Jurgen Klopp but he I, he really should have gone and uh, give gave Fabio Carvalho more minutes or loan him out in January maybe the plan is to loan him out to another Premier League team next season and then Fabio Carvalho can grow and develop Jurgen Klopp also said something very interesting Somebody showed me after our last game what people write when they get our lineup. So before the West Ham game has been played, and Jurgen Klopp laughed because not a lot of them wanted Curtis in the lineup, and not a lot of them wanted Cody Gakpo on the pitch. A lot uh, actually gave up when they saw Joel Matip starting. They said, The game is over. I'm going to watch another game if Joel Matip plays. And these are people who, are, who actually support Liverpool. I say support loosely because they are probably glory hunting fans who when the team is struggling, they are not uh, supporting the players enough. And these players, these people like us usually, you got said, laughing. But I understand this season makes people nervous. And yeah, Matip hasn't been great this season. But to say I'm going to watch another game and to say it's over even before we played the game, I never understood that mentality. Actually wait until the game is played and after that you can say Jurgen Klopp made a mistake starting Curtis Jones or Cody Gakpo or Joao Matip, but actually wait until the game has started. I mean, to question Jurgen Klopp's team selection, I have done that previously, but who are we to question Jurgen Klopp who has been to four Champions League finals and uh, a Europa League final. He has been the best manager in England on a uh, half the budget of Man City. We ran them so close and we should have won three Premier League titles instead of one. Jurgen Klopp also said it's good that in this case, in, in this case, we make the decisions and not the people who write on social media, Twitter, Instagram. If you go through social media, you think, oh my God, there is really no bigger, no bigger problem in the world than our midfield. And I think, uh, that's spot on. And yes, it's true, Liverpool's midfield is a huge problem, but it's definitely not the biggest problem in the world, and hopefully Liverpool can rectify that in the summer. And Jurgen Klopp was asked, can he give any insight to his conversation with Jordan W. Henry? Because he said uh, that uh, we spoke before the game and after the game, and this, the... Um, 
talks were very positive, but he said, I'm not sure that the drug is already invented that you would have to give me to do to do that, to reveal uh, my conversation with the Liverpool owner <laughs> and to give that to probably the Daily Mail. That would never happen under Jurgen Klopp. And Jurgen Klopp also said on Tottenham that they have real quality and we have to make sure that they cannot show it. That's always the same during the best Tottenham moments and also the lesser good Tottenham moments. And I respect the quality of their team a lot. So it's really important for Liverpool to put their best foot forward and just to compare the Man City's success to Liverpool's success since 2008 so since Man City have been taken over by their mega rich owners they spent 1.4 billion euros that's 1438 million euros according to Transfermark Liverpool spent around 1 billion on uh, players so of course a lot less than Manchester City but not by that much uh, Chelsea spent 1.2 billion Man United 1.04 billion but what is uh, really staggering is the net spend. Man City's net spend, which I think is far more important than, than what uh, you spend in total. Man City's net spend is 1.2 billion pounds. So that's 1,200 million pounds. And Liverpool's net spend is 327. So 25% of the net spend of Manchester City let me get this straight here, guys. Liverpool, since 2008, that's like 15 years, have spent 327 million net, which is a net spend, even if I divide that by 14, it's 23 million. Manchester City's net spend per season is, even if I divide that by 15, 80 million. So Man City spend 80, 90 million pounds net per year, since they have taken over and Liverpool have spent 23 million which is absolutely crazy that uh, that Man City spent four times as much net as Liverpool and yet Jurgen Klopp has made the miracle of competing with them which is absolutely amazing in my opinion. Before Manchester City's financial doping, you didn't need 95 to 100 points to win the Premier League and Manchester City are only capable of recording these totals because they can afford 50 million pound players on the bench, multiple of them to sit on the bench. They can afford the transfer fees and the wages. When you are just a regular top club, you can't afford players like John Stones, Bernardo Silva, Calvin Phillips, who cost 50 million pounds each to sit on the bench, Nathan Ake as well. Not being able to afford those backups means even if you have a, a starting 11 that's good enough to win the title, you lose a game here and there because you get injuries, you get tiredness, you get fatigue and the backup players who come in are obviously not as good as the starting 11 players. But Man City have a bench with the, the, all the backup players are almost as good as the starting 11 players and it's always been the financial doping that has helped Man City over the line. Yes, Pep Guardiola is a great manager but he's not the best manager in the world. He's not better than Jurgen Klopp. Give Pep Guardiola the budget of Tottenham or Arsenal and let's see if he can win the league two, three, four times in five or six years. Absolutely no chance. Absolutely no chance. And Martin Keown has been debating Liverpool's top four chances. He's the former Arsenal centre-back who is a legend at Arsenal. And he said that Man United has some very difficult fixtures and he can see them dropping enough points that Liverpool can overtake them. If you look at the games, Man United have to play Aston Villa, probably the form team at the moment, along with Newcastle and Man City. I just feel it's not going to be as easy as everyone is saying it is. They've got Aston Villa, Brighton, they've got to go away to West Ham. That's a tricky game as well. Newcastle are flying again and Man City are absolutely in the form of their lives. Yeah, I'm saying Liverpool can do this. Liverpool can finish in the top four. Liverpool could chase Man United down. Let me tell you, I bet they are going after it. They are not giving up. And if Liverpool can get the consistency back of last season or three seasons ago, then Liverpool have a chance. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying Liverpool will do it because I think it's, it's more 
more likely that Liverpool will drop points than Man United dropping enough points for Liverpool to overtake them. But let's see. And if Liverpool draw one or two games, it's over. So you have to win the last like nine or ten or eleven games in a row to win the to get to the top four. And Liverpool have only done that I think once when we got to 97 points, and that was still not enough to win the title. And Dermot Gallagher, who is uh, an ex-referee, he explained why VAR didn't intervene for a potential penalty against Liverpool when Thiago accidentally handled the ball. He sa said, I spoke to three ex-pros last night. One said it was a penalty, two said no penalty. That's how tough a decision it is. Everybody is, is split between was it a penalty or not a penalty. I think the referee relays back that he thinks Thiago is falling, he is breaking his fall and it strikes his arm. I understand that. The VAR looks at it and he has to judge whether it is a clear and obvious error. If you speak to 100 people, people 50 would say yes 50 would say no the VAR can't say go and have a look it has to have a reason there is so much traction of penalty and no penalty it is one that can go either way in that case the VAR is indebted to the referee and he has to go back to him and say it's your decision if the VAR had to the power to say I'm not sure go and see what you think the, the referee could look at it and say no penalty that would sit better with people but I think uh, the rules clearly state that if the ball ricochets off another the player and uh, it strikes uh, the player's arm and if the, the ball travels a very minimal distance then it's not a penalty. So the, the referee only applied the rule book to that specific situation. That's my opinion. But let me know what is yours in the comments below. I would love to hear it. And thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.